mothers, daughters, sisters, outcasts. Meet the sex workers of Makini, Sierra Leone. For the doctor, they not pay you, beat you, rape you, then they do this, and then they call sex worker. It's a job that can cost them their life. What's happening? What's happening? This is a story of a group of women striving for a better life. But is there any hope? <laughs> Built as immoral outcasts who live in a city underworld, sex workers are shunned and avoided by many in Sierra Leone. Hey, sir. I'm not fine. You would tell me to me, Sabi. Welcome to the world of Lady P. She has been chosen by the sex workers to be their mama, their matriarch. Here is my resident. All of them, they are tenants. Some of them, they are my sisters. Some of them, they are my colleagues. And some of them, they are my... <laughs> Come and see. My name is Tyson Conte. I'm a filmmaker, and this is my hometown. This night, I'm going to see sex workers go out for their business. who we'll follow them to the streets. There are more than 1,000 sex workers in McKinney hustling to survive. COVID-19 has made their lives even harder. I want to. I wait for Now, every client counts even more than usual. How much do I can get when I can at it? Then, a shocking reminder of the risks sex workers take to feed themselves and their families. As the money dries up, the risk increases. Most see no choice but to carry on. Many have children to provide for and no partner or husband around to help. Aisata is a 21-year-old single mother who turned to sex work aged 14. When she became pregnant with her daughter Ramatu, her boyfriend left her. All I sacrifice I do for me no my cancer for my child please me picking. Like me, I don't need receive so many pains and activities. So I hope safe me picking can be by they will fetch for they will fetch for me, fetch for the one day he sees advantage pa. To me. This problem, like so much in my country, has its roots in our 11 years civil war in the 90s and early 2000s. To know the story of so many Sierra Leone sex workers, look no further than Lady P and the day the rebels arrived in her life, aged just 10. I didn't pay me granny me and see them kill me. They caught this in two the layers, so they caught this in two. I said, I don't want to watch that. Let me get that way, man. Tragedy in Lady Peace's life wouldn't end there. In 2014, and by now married with children, the deadly Ebola epidemic devastated her family. By the way, we get three picking there. We want to adopt her two, and we get her. The sick guy affects them. So, we say, where affects me? My man can die, my man can die, then two picking and die. All man can die. 
Then bad, bad thing that already happened to me, because of it don't be my life experience before, and that make a stand for let that no repeat today. So because of that, I stand firm, I fight hard, I said to me, to me, lots of me drop blood na ground for that to see all every sex worker knowing right, getting right, no matter what. As the weeks pass, the coronavirus death toll is not as bad as feared. By late May, according to official figures, just 46 people have died. But the risks that sex workers face haven't improved. Lady P calls me to say that Isata has been attacked. Well, the man who meets me in a club, I didn't take my clothes in Chera and the places. They put me money in at 200,000. So now they could be very fed, fed, fed. I did fed time for my common ado when you take the gun. Not only does Aisata say her attacker was a police officer, but it was not the first time he'd allegedly beaten her up and robbed her. After a few weeks, Aisata decides to take the police officer to court with the backing of Lady P. But there is a problem, a big problem. Aisata has gone missing. She hasn't even returned to look after her young daughter. Days pass with no sign of her. There are rumors she could be in the capital, Frita. With no other leads, Lady P and I go there to look for her. I want to start seeing if he didn't have Toya. One of Lady P's contacts called someone who might know more. She hands the phone to Lady P. Okay, the peculiar are the person as must kill a yellow one. Again, the teeth. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, the number. Yeah. 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 The it appears Aisata has been trafficked more than 1,000 kilometers to the Gambia's capital, Banjul, notorious as a sex tourism hotspot. Two months pass with no contact from Aisata. I'm seriously starting to fear the worst. And then out of the blue, Aisata gets in church. Desperate voice messages and photographs trickle in from a number in Mali. I try to call Isata back many times, but her phone rarely works. Finally, over several calls, I piece together what's happened to Isata and another Makini sex worker who was kidnapped alongside her, called IP. After a month, Isata and Ike were trafficked further to Mali where they were abandoned in a small mining village and were regularly raped by miners. If you are not going for rape, what did they do? I managed to track down Ike's mom, Kadiatu. She has not heard from her daughter for months. <laughs> I 
Je reste de car goto la car courba se ba ke pa ke menga par for. There is one glimmer of hope though. Aisata and IK have befriended a minor called Abu, who is letting them use his phone to contact him. He has agreed to help them get back home. I contact a Malian journalist, Momodu Tapi. He calls Abu and locates the village. It's an hour's drive from the town of Keneb. I wait nervously with Kadiatu, IK's mom. As Tapi finally arrives at the spot where he's arranged to meet Abu. Abu! Isata and Ike. Ike, thank you very much. This is a brothel, and some people are getting twitchy about the camera. After three months, the women are finally safe and on their way to the International Organization of Migration in Mali's capital, Bamako. The IOM is a UN body which aids trafficked people. They have agreed to help Aisata and Aiki return home. Hey, Aisata. Camera <laughs> boy. <laughs> We are all here ready. Parents are outside waiting for their daughters. They can't wait. It's a joy, you know, it's a celebration for me in my mind, my heart, because I was not thinking it's gonna turn out this way. We are happy that these girls are finally coming back. Aisata and Aike spent three months with the IOM in Mali, who checked out their stories of kidnap and trafficking. They have the UN body to thank for returning them home. <laughs> <laughs> These lives that we are almost lost, we regain them, they come back to the family. Today the mothers have their daughters and the daughters have their mothers back. The question is, what kind of life will await them now? <laughs> 